Hello, hello. What's up, chat? Where is my music? One second. Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> so, today I wanted to finish the monster skills table. Just a few more modifications. So, PC skill table, use learn skill. So yeah, this is it. So, um, So first of all, I want to oh, second. Yeah. So let's add another condition. Hopefully the last one uh, is the range limiter. So Can I have, where is my, where is my schema? Here it is. So let's add main target range and max target range. <clears throat> and I don't need these flags actually because the whole table is ignored. So the minimum default will be zero and the maximum default is gonna be mm, 30K, I think. Oh wait, 10K. So, can I add somewhere here in target range, next target range, one to ten thousand. And right here, I think I already have the target calculation, target range calculation on second, yeah, the distance. So after we have found the target, only then we execute this last check. Uh, 
We need to rename this. And then uh, if distance is less than learn scale min target range <coughs> or distance is greater than max target range, then we skip it. So as simple as that. Okay, then we can uh, recreate this table to this. So first, we generate the CSV, and then import it into the database. Oops. Yeah, it looks like this thing not uh, assigning the comments proper properly. <clears throat> okay. Let's assign the max target range value. Okay, so now this should be working. So let's test this. Um, how can I test this? These three skills. Wait, why is it set to 1% here? It's the same kind of monster. It looks like it's some kind of bug. Let me check. Um, I need this. This. And this. Okay, so <clears throat> so let's try and set the range to I don't know um two thousand. Oh. Uh, 900. Something like that. Okay, and uh, yeah, one sec, I need this. Okay. 
and I need to start the server. Okay, now we can test. So this guy now he should aid only when the target is really close to him. So let's test that. to make your friend heal you. So looks like it's working. Let's try again and bring him closer. Like right here. Yeah. So this is done, let's quickly push this while I didn't forget. And yeah, 900 actually looks fine for this. Can do the same for this one.
and for this. Okay. <clears throat> Let's export. Uh, where is it? Actually, I forget to build. Maybe we have some gut styling issues. Let's check. Okay, all good. Now I can push this. And this. Okay. And probably another thing is um, I wanted to consider making all of these conditions uh, nullable. So it's easier to it's easier to read the the table. Uh, let's try to do that. So all of these. Let's stop messing up the, the thing. And we can remove default values. And actually, I'm not sure if this CSV reader can support all these um, nullable types, but let's try. Maybe. <clears throat> And uh, wait here. Um, I had actually something like available oh, here. Okay. This is skills. And let's remove the default values right here.
Okay. And now we need to do something here. Uh, health factor. So yeah, it's gonna be if health factor has value and health factor less than non health factor, then we continue. And the same is gonna be for max health factor. Okay, then the enemies gonna be the same. like that. Now this is correct, this is correct, then target type. Mm, target type. Yeah, this is something about the skill itself. <clears throat> so yeah, let's check something else. We have the distance. So now uh, min health factor to do, do that. Yeah, min health factor, max health factor, min target health factor. Wait, min target health factor. Oh, it's right here. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, I missed this one. Okay, these two are done. Min target range. 
Evet. Also we'll have this thing right here. Yeah, I guess I need it in two places. Okay. Then target range. I did it. Enemies. Here it is. And this is not implemented yet. Okay. And now I can actually try and optimize this a little bit. So, um, so I can do something like this. Oh, wait. Yeah, this optimization, although it can be nice in terms of resource cons consumption, but yeah, this is going to be painful to write. Hello, hello. Yes, today I have a different shirt. <laughs> So, um, this should be a little bit different. So we need to move this condition down here. So now the question is, is it worth it or not? worth it in terms of performance but uh, yeah I don't really like how it looks Well, I think it can just figure out something a little bit later. For now, this is okay. Let's copy this for the max checks. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, this looks good. And this, um, this should be a little bit easier to do. I can just add this. And only then we can check this. So if target is not null and we have one of these two limitations, only then we calculate the target health factor and then compare it. Okay. Uh, and I think I need the same right here. Hmm. Yeah. So if this has value or this one has value, only then we run this check. Okay. Looks good. And this is going to be extremely useful as well, because we can skip the distance calculation if we don't need it. Okay. Yeah, but this one, I would have to leave it like that. So we calculate the health factor only once for the whole entity, because yeah, this is the source health factor. Okay. Current enemies. Yeah, this this one should be pretty easy actually. No crap, this one is a quarantine lock. So it would be actually good to isolate this. Hmm. Okay, let's try. Um so if this has value or this has value then we run these checks and only then we get the enemy counts. Well, I guess to unify this a little bit and make it a little bit more readable, I can skip caching this thing um on the top level so it's gonna be if this has value or this has value then we calculate the health factor in a local variable and then we run these to checks, but I also have to add these checks. I can remove this. So this is minimum health 
factor, this is maximum health factor. Okay. Okay, so this looks good, I think. This is fine. I don't like that we have these two checks, but... Yeah, I guess this is fine. And I need to duplicate the range check right here as well. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be uh, scale range equals max scale range. Wait, no, no, no. Learn scale max, max target range. Or scale max range. Now, if this is greater than zero, then we calculate the distance and we check for this stuff. Actually, no, wait, I need to expand this a little bit. So if this has value, then we need to calculate math uh, minimal value among this and scale max range. So, uh, so if we have this max target range specified, then we take the lowest value, either the, the value from the NPC skills or from the scale max range. Because we definitely can't exceed this one. Otherwise, we just use the scale range. Okay. So this should be better now. And uh, I need to update the structure as well. Um, so wait, 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 not here. I need to first generate the CSV file, right? Yeah, right. Then load it into the database. So now we have new types here, okay. And now we can set everything that we don't need to null. <clears throat> so this can go away. Now everything that is one also can go away. All of this. 
And here all the ones I'm in target range. Next target range, everything that is ten thousand. Main enemies. Max enemies. And all of this. Yeah, now it's much better to read. Okay, and now we export this. I only hope that... Hello? Client, hello, hello. Okay, never mind. So now I only hope that the server can load the novel types. Because I don't remember how that CSV parser works. Okay, looks good, I think. Uh, let me check what we have in the CS3 file real quick. NPC skills. Yeah, now all of this is empty. Great. And now if I import that back into the database, will it still will it still be null or will it change to the default value? Yes, we did DB. Okay, perfect. Um but but I want to check if it actually if it actually contains the null values. So let me top this and start this one in the debug mode. So, uh, learn skill. Okay, so the first entry should have max health factor. Max health factor. Okay. And everything else is now. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. Now it started properly. And let's check. Can I grab a monster? Oh, Harry, you go with me. Ok, 
Okay. So yeah. This is working fine. Now let's pull him away. Okay, so this is actually done now. Let's push this real quick. Oh yeah, and I wanted to change this thing. So wait, what level is this monster? Level 3. Yeah, so let's set this one to 2% as well. That was definitely my old mistake. And let's let's export this. Okay. Right, so let me mark this one as done. Now we have something wrong with a dead skill. And I'm not sure what it is. So where is my server console? So now if I try to untoggle it... Yeah, it looks like it's on the client side. Uh, let me check. Yeah, I think it's on the client side, but I'm not sure why would be there a problem and how, well, okay, one second, skills, 
act dead. Eight four. What the hell? What does state four mean? State four looks like a sit stand. What? Uh, okay, this is weird. Let me check what it was in the original. The original table. And what did they change so it became broken? Because it was definitely working before. It was 31. Then why is this for? What the hell? Hmm. And 31 is any state, right? Yeah. Well, let's try. I have no idea why this was for. First, let me fix this one. So let me export this. Okay. And there is start. Why the hell is it broken now? It was 100% working fine. Huh.
Okay, this is definitely something on the client side. I would have to look into that later. First, let me fix this currently broken state. Okay. Um, yeah, now uh, one weird thing is you can somehow use a rifle without the rifle mastery skill, which is not good. So here it says rifle master required. We have don't have a rifle mastery. But still I can use skill requirement so where was it stored again um, it's in weapon types um, weapon stats mm, yeah here it is weapon stats Oh, mm, this one is overridden. Okay, so I need to require skill ID this one. So let me check weapon three, no, weapon four. Here it is, rifle mastery. So it's present in the table. Get requirements, stats requirements. Oh wow, I'm not checking those requirements, it seems. Hmm. Mm, this is default combat system strategy, check flags. So somewhere here we should check the weapon the weapon skills. Character availability.
there. Um, yeah, so we get the active weapon. If it's if we don't have an active weapon, we check for the the fist attack. Otherwise, compare the skill and that's it. But we also need um, weapons that uh, Okay, one second. Item prototypes. I think I had uh, like a require scale field. Yes, require scale. So let's find these things the weapon prototypes. Here they are. So let's pin this column and this. So yeah, we have these skills. Can check against that, but I can also use the prototypes. Mm -hmm. So we load this into the item prototype requirements. So it's going to be learn skill requirement. It's going to be weapon requirement. I don't think we have any checks on these prototypes. No, everything is zero. Weapon requirements, class requirements, this is attribute requirements, this is fine, uh, race requirements, gender, character base level. So yeah, what I can do is I can just check requirements for the weapon prototype. Is satisfied by... Uh, character info. Huh? Action source. So something like that. Um, it's just I don't really like that we have this data here that we are not checking actually. This is only for the client side. But I think this is fine. We have the prototype ID. We have this thing for the client side. 
And this is only for the changing. Okay, so let's check now. And it's still not checking it properly. What the hell? Okay, it's time to debug this thing. So here we have five requirements. The last one is learn skill requirement, which is looking for this one, the five. Yes. And this five is this one. Wow. What the hell? Um, okay. Um, So we have our character learn skills. Yeah, this is the skill. So get by base AD and we have it. Oh crap. Why is this commented out? So it's going to check against available skill ADs, right? Right. So, and available means uh, this is available. Learn skill is available. So it checks for the owner. Then character info. Character availability requirements. What do we have here? Base level, race, class, and the sit. Uh, then and then we check for the transferred class.
transfer scales contains this thing. Yeah. So this actually should be working. I have no idea why did I comment this piece of code out because it should be there. So let's check again. Okay, now it doesn't let me use it. Actually, that the whole weapon is disabled now. Okay. Perfect. This thing is not active. doesn't actually update the equipment so this is probably why um now wait when i change current class id this oh no uh, this should ch trigger the the updates So here, for example, character class changed, learn skills recounts. Okay. Mm, and the same should be for the equipment. So we should recount the equipment, but okay, let me check other stuff. So this is Client synchronization, okay, good. Party information. And this is the social. Okay, so this thing should actually update the equipment. Uh, Yeah, I need something like that.
Okay, now it should be working, hopefully. So let's open weapons, let's change class to one. Okay. Okay. So now it looks like it works. Uh, let's spawn a monster. And let's try attacking it. Okay. works and yeah now it gets disabled okay um While I'm at it, I can try and fix another bug where you can um, where you can wear a shield for a brief period of time until you log uh, when you change the weapon type. So. Uh, yeah, let's first commit this thing. So this is fixed. Now let's go. Let's go to the blacksmith. Let's uh, wear a shield. Okay, so now I have a dagger and a shield. And when I change the dagger's weapon type to, let's say, a sword stick. Oh, not the dagger. Uh, let's use this one instead. Change it to sword stick. Confirm. Confirm. Yeah. The shield is active. <laughs> Do I have the bonuses? Yes. What if I change the class? 
still active. Um. So how do we check if we can wear a shield? Um, Sun server, network, controllers, item controller, move, move item. <clears throat> Okay, we don't have any checks here, and this is fine. We need to somehow check that the shield... Mm. Oh, here we have validate item move. Target slot is a shield. Then we check here. Uh, we check the weapon type. Is two handed. Um, Where is it? Weapon type. Weapon type table. Oh, okay. So we need to do the same. We need to do the same um, when we update the equipment. Here, update item active states. No, not the active states. Uh, it should be like enabled or something. Um, wait, is available, maybe. is available um yeah and this is the, the flag that i'm actually sending to the client right send update item
send equipment yeah this is this is the flag so i need to integrate this thing into is available check So, um, if so, um, Actually, let me check where this has been used. Yeah, this is this is just uh, the thing that we use to determine if the equipment should should be active or not, uh, and send the state to the client. So if slot um, is shield. Then we need to do something like this. So if this container is equipment container um we get the slot if this is a shield Uh, then we need to get um, the weapon that is in the same set as this shield. So, uh, I've seen it somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Here. So this is going to be equipment container, uh, slot is shield one, then we get weapon one, otherwise we get weapon two, uh, and then we can copy this, I guess. If weapon is not null, we get the weapon type, and here we can get the weapon type. Hmm. We just don't have the access to this data. Great. How the hell can we forward this data into this instance? Mm. We can't use dependency injection here. Absolutely can't. <sighs> Hmm. 
well I can theoretically add this field like weapon type to the item prototype and only assign it to the weapon um, prototypes but that's not a really nice solution I think huh. <laughs> okay, if I move this from the weapon type to something like weapon stats, would that help me or not? Yeah, I can move it. Then we don't need to record weapon types here on the server side. Mm. So, okay. Weapon stats table. Where is it being used? I have absolutely no idea how to do this. So the weapon stats table doesn't contain the weapon type table. No, it's not. The weapon type table contains the weapon stats. Mm. <sighs> this is weird. Um, so weapon type table. Where do we use this? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I can actually assign this to the item prototypes unless I have a link from stats to the prototypes. Crap. <laughs> I do have the link to this table. And why do I need it? Default item prototype ID. Well, I guess I can replace it with just the actual ID. Can I? I 
I think I can. So in the item prototype table, where is it? No, weapon type table. Have the weapon stats table. So if I add like a field weapon type uh, to the item prototype with all the data needed, then I can actually do this check. Otherwise it's not going to work. But to do that I have to get rid of the link of item prototypes in the weapon stats table because otherwise it's going to be a circular reference so instead of default prototype i'm going to use default prototype id which is going to be an int and it's going to be like that Can I get rid of this? Can I get rid of this dependency? Okay, then we need to fix the usages of that here. Okay, what is this? Oh, okay. Mm, this game data. Item prototype table by id that's default prototype id if default prototype is null then we run exception um, Something like that. Then we replace all of this and this. Let's copy that because I'm sure I will need this. Go to the next file here the default prototype and right here and now we can place this reference into the item prototype 
it's gonna be public uh, weapon type weapon type. So instead here we can actually use weapon prototype weapon type is to hand it. Wait, wait, wait. Um Weapon type equals this, and then we check for two handed. Okay, so this will actually work now, hopefully. And now we need to assign this data to the item prototypes table here. So we need to add reference to the weapon stats table. No, weapon type table. Like that. Weapon type table. Um So now somewhere at the bottom we check if uh, item prototype type equals no not type uh, part equals weapon item prototype weapon type equals weapon type table by id item prototype dot type wait 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 item prototype type right uh, where was this used once again? A weapon type table. Yes, just type. And I can actually now simplify this thing. Instead of reference into the weapon type table, I can just use weapon type. And the same thing here. Weapon type. And this can stay the same. Okay, let's try this now.
Okay, now it's not active. Uh, if I put the dagger here. Okay, I probably need to just uh, do the equipment update there. Uh, but okay, let's go back to this. Oh, now I have to unequip the shield. So let's change the type of this thing back to a sword. Now we use the shield with it. Okay. Now we change the weapon type. This to a sword stick. And yeah. The shield now becomes unavailable. Um, and let's check the attributes. Yeah, we don't have the block rate. Okay. Now let's put dagger into the slot number two and the shield there. Here's, here's our block rate. Okay. I think this works now. So where was that forum issue for this uh, bug? One second. Should be this one. The equip shield sort. The change to other type. Okay, so this is fixed now. Um, oh my God, can't speak. Um, so now this can be closed. Okay, so I think I can try and fix one more issue. Uh, is this one? Oh, and I forgot to change the title actually.
Okay, this should be easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no more, um, no more shields with sore sticks. Um, well, it, it's still gonna be like that for a little while until I finish with this skill update, monster update. So yeah, you can still enjoy it for a little bit. Um, so this thing, um, okay. So do I have the shirts? No, I don't. So let's go to the shop. can just use this one. So I need five ester key. Oh, level 10 required. Okay, so now when I reset the stats, it's still available. But if I change the weapon even, it's disabled. So this should be pretty easy to fix. Um, it's just, I think, on the reset stats command and the reset stats item, I need to, I need to do the equipment update. Uh, but first, let's commit this thing. So this is... Um, okay. This is... Um, check... Um, shields and weapon compatibility uh, uh, during the equipment update one type prototype ID and this thing okay So, um, the stat reset, stat reset, First, let's make close all of these tabs because I'm gonna get lost. So, here it is actually. Mm. 
Hmm. I think it can make it a little bit more generic. So, hmm, where was that? Not in the vital component, but in the default strategy. Uh, there should be something like here, uh, combat attributes, stat attributes. That attributes when these are changed uh, where is it? on stat attribute changed count character battle stats. For example, here or no, no, not here. Um, actually, here I can try and update the character's uh, equipment. And start attributes change, right? Yes. Uh, so. Here it is actually. Yeah, should be enough. So let me log out. And let's restart. Did I save? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so right now it's not available. Let's change stats. And yeah, now it gets turned on. And if we reset stats, now it's disabled. And just to double sure, double check, let's. Um, Let's try and actually buy the, the reset potion and use that instead of a chat command. So right now five is there. And this is enabled. Okay, perfect. So now this is working. And now this is gonna work not only with the um, um, stat resets, but with any stuff that actually changes your stats. And it's gonna apply immediately. Okay, perfect. Let's commit this.
Now this can be marked as fixed. Okay, this is done. Uh, one second. So now I want to fix the, uh, the damage table. <laughs> so where it is. Wait, enemy table. Hmm. So here in the battle component we have the damage table. What I need to do is reset it after certain time out of combat. Um, and for that I need to track time in combat or track time out of combat. Hmm. Another option would be to actually reset it um, or clean up old uh, damage table entries when you're not in combat. Mm. No, wait, so the, the, the main problem is when, um, when someone like hits a monster a couple of times, reduces the health of the monster, and then the combat uh, stops. So for example, the player dies or something like that. Uh, and the monster left alone uh, the monster is going to regenerate the health, but the damage table is not going to be reset after that. All the hits done to the monster will be stored in the damage table. And for example, when someone else tries and actually kills the monster, they can going to receive um, less exp rewards because um, they are not the only ones who uh, were hitting the monster, at least mm, not the only ones starting the damage table. So I need to find a proper, um, a proper moment when to clear this damage table. My idea was when the health is completely restored, Mm. 
but okay maybe i also need like uh combat duration trackers so i can do this without the combat duration trackers combat duration timers um i could like add a periodic updatable that is gonna just check once i don't know few in few seconds if we are in combat and if we are out of of combat and uh our health is full then we're gonna reset the damage table but this is gonna be somehow like 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 a hack or not not a proper solution i think mm, what else we can do is we can actually track time in combat and out of combat That way, for example, if we are out of combat uh, for more than, I don't know, one minute, then we can clear the damage table regardless of the current health value. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, do I need the combat duration timers and out of combat timers? Could theoretically use them um, with the NPC skill conditions. Like for example, I don't know, minimal combat duration or minimal out of combat duration can be added as a condition to this table. I'm not sure though, is it going to be useful or not? Actually, it can be useful. I can build some complex uh, strategies for the monsters based on that. Okay, so let's say we have um, we have two timers, combat duration and out of combat duration. Then, uh, for example, we built another updatable. This is gonna check if we're out of combat for one minute, let's say. Then we reset the damage table. then we don't have to tie to the the health value which is better i think hmm.
Yeah, let's do that. So for this, I need, I need um, public time span. Um, combat duration equals time span zero and out of combat duration. And then in the update, like in the global update stuff, I can Do we have like is in bottle something like that? Regeneration update is basically doing the same stuff, at least the same check. Is in battle. So oh, okay. Um Where is our update? Yeah, that's here. <clears throat> so if uh, battle info is in battle then we use this um, combat duration plus delta time elapsed time and this out of combat duration equals time span zero we reset it otherwise we do the opposite. This combat duration equals time span zero. This out of combat duration gets increased by delta time elapsed. And then I need a separate update uh, method. Hmm. We have an enemy table update. Uh, we can do um, the damage table here as well. into this. So enemy table update. Should I create a separate update method or not? Yeah, let's create a separate one. So it's gonna be damage table update. It can be run like once in five seconds.
and we're gonna do first enemy table again oh damage table damage table we have the clear method but also I can create clear old also or something like that do I need that because if we are out of combat for some extensive period of time then we already have all the entries uh, expired so yeah let's add a property which is gonna be called public time span um, damage table clean up mm. um out of combat time and this is gonna be time time span from seconds and it's gonna be 30 seconds should be enough so now here if um, this out of combat duration more than this period then we do the cleanup gonna call the clear method well once in five seconds for every entry but I think this is fine So let's check now. Maybe we can run it once every 10 seconds. or even 30 seconds so the period is 30 seconds and that is 30 seconds e yeah it should be okay Which means that, for example, if we haven't been in combat uh, for the last 30 seconds, then we do the cleanup. Yeah, should be fine.
So now, um, so now if I hit this monster, crap, this is gonna be so. His damage table should should be cleaned up. Um, so let me log in with another character. Let's see which one was that. Crap. Oh no. Okay, let's do this with, with the monster that they know for sure I will not lose. This one. Wait for thirty seconds. So should be enough. I forgot already what was the time. Okay, so let's try. Um, but wait, first I want to actually debug this, so I need this, and I need um, distribute text rewards. So now let's kill him. Let's 
Tap. Okay. So now, uh, damage table. Crap, it didn't clean up. Why? Hmm. Wait, uh, if I check combat duration, out of combat duration, so this seems fine. This seems actually accurate, but oh crap, I know why it didn't do anything. So um, I forgot to add this updatable to the update methods. Uh, where was it? Here it is. Um, damage table update. Here. Okay, let's check this again. Let's attach the debugger. What was the method again? Tribute X rewards. So, first, let's make it hits. Okay, now let's wait 30 seconds. Actually, I have to wait more. I have to wait for like one minute because once in 30 seconds it updates, but it can update like in random period. And at that particular moment, it can be like less than 30 seconds. Actually, this, this should be enough already. Now let's finish the monster.
So here we go. Damage table. Yeah, now we have only a single record there. Perfect. Uh, and let me double check the combat duration. Yeah, 37 seconds. Out of combat duration is zero. Okay, looks like it works. No, I didn't receive any exp. And we won. Is that what the monster actually has? One second. Yeah, perfect. So now this is fixed. And let's commit everything. Okay, looks good. And one more thing that I wanted to check real quick is can I add um, emulsions to the monsters, the custom, the custom ones that we created. So let's take this one. Does it have any requirements? No, not really. And anyway, those requirements shouldn't be checked. So if we go to NPC skills, let's create a skill. This one, probability 100, only one idol. Uh, any health factor. So 
something like that. Now we export it. Let's close this client. Let's exit this one. And restart the server. So it should be in idle without any additional conditions. Oh, here we go. Now he's spamming all those emotes. Okay. Um, let's set it to 2%. Or three percent. A little bit weird because um, we don't have any cooldowns for it. Yeah, technically I can use this skill. Hmm. But I, I don't think that I don't think if I should. Uh, maybe I can fake it a little bit. So. example I can assign this emote to uh, switching the, the combat stances yeah probably I will just for now this is fine uh, at least I know I can use those emotes. So I can theoretically create another AI action. Uh, where is it? AI actions. Um, so here, for example, return state behavior. Um, I can just add an action to this sequence. Uh, so, action the action this is this amount is actually an aura.
So I can, for example, create um, an action that will create an aura. Okay, so this is return state behavior. This is not what I need. I need inside the combat behavior. Coward. Hmm. I need him to use some kind of emote when this uh, condition starts. They, I can actually separate this into a separate behavior, like covered behavior, in which uh, it's gonna just just run away constantly. Okay, I need to think about it a little bit. Uh, but okay, at least I know that I can use emotes. Let's remove this test scale. And restart. This is good. So yeah, I think I'm gonna call it a day. Um, I implemented what I wanted and two bug fixes along the way. Uh, so yeah, let's continue tomorrow, probably with more NPC skills. Yeah, we're gonna see. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.